I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to Wentworth Park here in the UK. Look at all the Mercedes trucks, guys. This is the Mercedes main depot here in Wentworth Park. It's on a 70 acre site. There's over 500 trucks on this site, guys. It's massive. So I'm here for the truck challenge. So there's about 50 drivers here and we're all taking part in all these different challenges and we get judged on how we're driving and performing throughout the day and we'll see how it goes. We're going driving the new Actros and when I come back later on, I'll be showing you the new Actros Edition 1. They're only building 400 and one of them is in there. The first one ever in the UK is in that building. I'll be showing you that when we come back. So we need to get cracking straight away. I need to hop into a car and head out to the off-road section first. So let's go out and see how it goes. Okay, we're in the Arox here, doing a bit of off-roading and skills test. So who knows how I'll end up, but uh, as long as I don't hit anything. <laughs> and we do have mirror cam. I'll be driving a Mercedes for the first time using that feature and it's in the Arox. I didn't think it was going to be in the Arox, I thought it was going to be in the Actros, but we're in the Arox. Okay, and we have the diff lock on as well. Diff lock's on. Yeah, so I'm just a bit conscious it might roll back a bit. No, no, it, it won't. No. The handbrake only releases when you've got load. Oh, very there good, go. very good. Okay. Right hand wheels on this mound here. Giving it a good test here now. Okay, we're in the 8x4 tipper. So these trucks, Lee, are allowed to gross 32 tonne in the UK. That's, that's that correct, right? yes. Yeah. Let's go nice and easy across here now. So something to bear in mind when you get off these, I want you to pull up in that garage nose in, but the truck needs to be over to the left because you're now going to reverse down these cones. Oh yes, okay. So better keep tight to that left, exactly left one there. It. We're not on the watch, Lee, are we? <laughs> are we being timed? <laughs> no, no. You are being marked, though. Yes. So I've been now driving with mirror cam, what? Two minutes. <laughs> and uh, I've actually no issue with it. If I hit any of the cones, guys, I'm going to lose a point. Ten points. Yeah. You start off with 100 and you lose 10 each time. Concentration. This is the face of concentration here, guys. So uh, I, be I, I better not keep going back, Lee, until I hit some. No, 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 no. Yeah. So it's not like another type of competition where you have to knock things down. No. <laughs> this is everything has to stay standing, guys. We done it, lads. I didn't knock anything. <laughs> In the Arox, the 3240 8x4 tipper, and the body is built by Thompson. So it's time now to take the 2545 Mercedes Actros out for a test drive. So let's hop in and hit the road. Okay, I'm just setting off now, just leaving Mercedes Benz with the Actros, the 2545, and I have Jamie beside me holding the camera. Um, so this 2545 Actros is on a full front air suspension. So uh, Jamie, it's a bit busy here, isn't it? We need to take the fourth exit off this roundabout, but uh, this is a bit busy. Uh, this man is letting me by, thank you very much. I don't think he is. Oh, he is in the Volvo. Okay, thank you, thank you. We better take it easy going through here. Uh, okay, using mirror cam, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. Okay, but um, Jamie, you were explaining as well, which is a very good point with the mirror cam. Uh, let me just get over onto this lane here. Yeah, that's uh, pretty easy. 
Uh, you were explaining as well with the mirror cam that it is actually very good in wet weather because you're not only looking through your window through rain but um, the rain kind of beads off the camera yeah so what yeah. happens is in a conventional mirrored vehicle you'll yeah. find you'll get water on the physical casing of the mirror itself yeah and then there's also water that gets sprayed up onto the glass of the window so you're looking through effectively two lots of wet surfaces that's correct yeah on mirror cam the camera is outside but shielded from the elements it's up much higher than your conventional mirror so what that means is that you are less likely to get spray on it in the first place and because the display is inside the cab that's obviously not getting wet so you're going to have a much clearer view in wet weather conditions but fortunately the sun is shining on us today in yeah. South Yorkshire <laughs> so we can't demonstrate the wet weather uh, functionality of the mirror but uh, yeah I, I would imagine Jamie sometime in the future they'll have a third camera angle on this unit and it will be mounted on the outside of that pillar so you know when you're approaching roundabouts it'll be like you're looking through this pillar so I can imagine that that will be the next stage of mirror cam um, yeah because like there is still a big section here that you have to look around but other than that it's still very good so yeah, I'm just so gonna knock it down a gear get a conventional truck with an A pillar on it anyway yeah so you've got that blind spot there then obviously outside the vehicle you've got another blind spot where the A pillar meets the mirror itself mm -hmm. and all we've done is we've taken that kind of 15 inch rectangle of mirror yeah. of blind spot and placed it on top of the blind spot that was already created by the A pillar. So we've got rid of one of the blind spots okay. facing forwards when you're yeah. looking forward at roundabouts, T junctions, etc. And if anybody's wondering, you can clean the lens from sitting in the seat. So just roll down the window and reach up, and you can actually just one quick wipe. There's no cleaning of a big mirror, Jamie. It's just like wipe and you're done. It would be really great, Jamie, to test it at night, wouldn't it? Just yeah, see. so we've tested it in night, we've tested it at tunnels. The camera and the lens, the screen, react a lot like an iPhone does. So automatically right. adjusting the brightness, automatically yeah. adjusting depending on how much light is going into it. So you can manually override that mm -hmm. using the central console, using multimedia cockpit, or alternatively you can just let it carry on adapting. But a lot of people asked us why there was no night vision mode it's because of course when you've got emergency vehicles coming behind you you need to be able to see the colors of their sirens blue oh yeah, i get red, you yeah yellow. so we maintain a full color display at all times yeah because the night vision would only be in black and white isn't that or right green and black or whatever it is yeah. these days so i'm just using the engine brake to slow us down there so we are driving with an empty load today fresh air on this trailer so uh, yeah, I mean, it's always nice to test them with a load, but they cannot always be available, Jamie, these loads. So we're just driving downhill now and I'm just using the exhaust brake to slow us down. Quite easy enough to do because we're not carrying a load, we are empty. But uh, yeah, it's nice and comfortable, Jamie, that front axle. As I always say, like those front axles on air, great comfort. But the mirrors are something you get used to very quick, Jamie. Yeah, I'm just going to move into this lane here. There we go. And I'm looking at the lines as well in the mirror. It shows you there. Yeah, the lines just uh, for the distance for things behind you, which is very good. So Jamie, is this the most advanced truck on the road at the moment, we in terms of the so. amount of tech? We believe so, yeah. you know, due to first production truck with mirrors removed by having the digital display. Yeah. First production truck available with level 2 autonomous driving, and the first production truck that is available with a fully digital interface, so multimedia cockpit interactive. 
we then got the likes of Active Brake Assist 5 with pedestrian recognition, so an emergency braking system that will pick up even a stationary pedestrian in front of the truck and apply full braking. We've got the predictive powertrain control, so that cruise control system that not only helps you now when you're on motorways, but also urban routes going around roundabouts, telling you what speed it's going to be taking the roundabout at. Yeah. Proximity control assist, as you mentioned saw earlier when we were going down, telling you the speed of the vehicle in front of you. Yeah, that's very good. So not only does it brake automatically, but it'll show up on screen the speed of the car ahead of you, what speed he's going. Like that's very good. But Jamie, one point I would make about the mirrors, it would be nicer if the image was a bit sharper, but as you explain yourself, this is designed for robustness. Yeah, you know, so in cold weather conditions, it has to be designed to cope with all conditions. Absolutely. Yeah. So we mentioned earlier about the screens reacting to light in the same way that your iPhone does. Everyone talks about megapixels that are available in their cameras these days. And on paper, the megapixels in the mirror cam, that figure looks quite small. But what you don't think about is driving around at 56 miles an hour for 100,000 miles a year or maybe more with your iPhone strapped outside your truck. Yeah. So it has to be able to be very reliable, very robust and work in all kinds of conditions all over the world. So whether that is minus 40 degrees, plus 40 degrees, wet, snow, wind, yeah. rain, whatever you have. So that's why, we, yes it sounds like a bit of a compromise, but it fully meets the legal requirements to be able to show us a round the vehicle view. Yeah, and the satellite navigation is, is exactly like, you would see this almost in an S-Class Mercedes. Look at it. <laughs> That's very good, isn't it? The screen quality, like the crispness of it. Yep, so that is again a full truck satellite navigation system. So yeah. you'll be able to put your vehicle weights, your vehicle heights in there, and then it won't take you on any routes that have got restrictions on them. So if you want to use some of the steering wheel controls to engage your PPC, so your cruise control, Oh yes. Set your yeah. cruise and then you won't have to actually drive using your feet. You'll be able to put your feet flat on the floor. All right, okay. So it's using the topography, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So reading the road. It's reading the road, yeah. To select the correct gear. Yeah, so I have the cruise control set at 48 miles per hour. So um, I have my foot completely off now. Um, so we're going to see what it does. Are we approaching a roundabout? Uh, not for a while yet, there's okay. one, uh, yeah, there's one in a bit. Now it's gone down to 43. So, so oh yes, so Jamie, does it go into eco roll when it feels it doesn't need extra work, is it? Absolutely, yeah. there's also the option for you to change the upper and lower hysteresis, so uh, whether you're at plus, plus three mile an hour, so whether you're happy to let it go three mile an hour over the speed that you set, or two miles an hour under the speed you set, you can change that yourself. But All right, okay. And then when that proximity control assist is active, if there were a vehicle in front of us, that's when in the bottom left hand corner where you've got the little dial would be uh, green on the truck. It's always great to have your different driving modes because then, you know, if you've got a light load on, keep it in economy plus and save a bit of fuel. But Jamie, isn't that what it's all about with trucks, isn't it? Saving as much fuel as you can. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at Miracam, not only do they give you a fantastic visibility all yeah. the way around, but you are reducing so much drag because mm. you're not dragging around these huge wind, you know, wind yeah. deflecting devices attached to either side. We've got yeah. a really nice, neat solution now that on its own, compared to the actress previous generation, can save 1.3% on your fuel. That's a 1.3% improvement over Actros 4, is it? Absolutely, yeah. And when you're like going around a tight bend or even a roundabout, you know, you don't have to move forward, you know, to have a to have a better angle of the trailer. The the, the top view here is panning for you when yeah. you're turning your wheel. So you know? the bottom part of the screen is showing you a wide angle view. Yeah. The top part can only ever show you the middle part of that view, yeah? So the top part of the display is showing you the middle section of the camera's wide angle lens. Yeah. It's effectively blanking out what's to the left and what's to the right of the wide angle. Right, okay. That's then connected to the steering. So your steering input 
is denoting how far across that image the camera system should pan. So the display is panning across to ensure that your trailer is always in full view and you can always see what's down the side of your trailer. In your conventional truck, you can knock in the mirrors so that they bend in a little bit, make you a yeah. bit narrower. You can do exactly the same in the mirror cam. So they can go back 65 degrees, they can get knocked forward 35 degrees. All right. So a lot of people have been asking us, ah, but what happens when I do eventually damage one? I say, mm. well, for starters, you're much less likely to damage it because the surface area is a lot smaller. Mm. It's up really high compared to a conventional mirror and it will still take a knock and go back in. But you explained to me before, Jamie, that you can get replacement mirrors anyway that'll go on an arm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've asked all our dealers in their service 24-hour vans to carry emergency repairs, which is a conventional mirror that you can stick on the side of it. So if you do damage one but you've got a ferry that you've absolutely got to catch, we can come out and fit it at the side of the road. Yeah. But equally, our service 24-hour vans will be able to come out and replace the mirror cam arm with a new mirror cam arm. Provided they can get mobile signal or Wi-Fi as it is, oh, yes. they'll then be able to recalibrate the mirror. So they bring the mirror cam arm out, they take yeah. off the damaged one, they put on the new one, and then all they have to do is tell the lens what type of truck they're attached to. Ah, so yeah. we're currently sat in a 2.5 meter cab, which means that the mirror cam arm is a short one. If right. we were in a 2.3 meter cab, the mirror cam arm would be a longer one to give you the same point of reference outside yes. the vehicle. Likewise, we're in a gigas we're in a big space, flat floor, so that yeah. denotes how high up the mirror cam arm is. Obviously, if we're in a stream space or got a different engine tunnel, etc., etc. So all that has to happen is service 24-hour technician comes out, fits the mirror cam arm on the side of the vehicle, and then tells the lens inside it. You're on the right hand side or the driver's side of an Actros 2545 big space, 2.5 meter wide cab. <laughs> So I hopped out of the truck and this is how close I was able to get to the cones here using the mirror cam. But uh, when I hopped out first, I was uh, too close um, by probably a, a few inches. So then I went forward a small bit and then reversed back again and that distance. So I'm after losing a point for that. Okay, so there's a bunch of drivers still out on the road doing the fuel challenge in the Actros. But look what's behind me. We have the Arox, the SLT, the 4163. So nearly 630 horsepower in this heavy haulage tractor unit. Yeah, it's some machine, isn't it? This also has the flat floor on the interior. But uh, we need to show you what's inside in this building, which is the Edition 1 Actros. Now there's only 400 of these being built. And the one in there is the first one to come to the UK. So there is only 35 of these coming to the UK. But uh, yeah, we need to go inside and show you what it's all about. Okay, this is where we had the driver briefing this morning. We've got three Actros on display here. So I'm just going to show you around the Edition 1. So this is it, the first one to come to the UK. Uh, number one of 35 only come to the UK, as I said, and uh, 400 being built in total. Now you'll notice straight away, the difference in the Edition 1 is we have the sun visor there with four integrated LED spotlights and also the Edition 1 sign on the sun visor. We also have the painted black grille and we have those chrome strips going up along the grille as well. So some of what you see would be available on a top of the range Mercedes Actros, but some features are unique to the Edition 1. So you see the badging there, it's almost like the cars, the way it's done on the 2563. And we have the aluminium wheels on this model, but uh, yeah, so look at this. We have the uh, adjustable fifth wheel. So the catwalk area, this looks more or less what you would see on a normal Actros. And we have the full air deflector kit at the back. And we have a 490 liter diesel tank and your add blue tank here as well. So let's just open up the door here. Uh, we have the brushed aluminium steps. Now these are unique to the edition one. So the four of them, and you'll notice as well, we have these little uh, areas here, look. So it's 
almost showing you what way to climb up. So this would be left foot first, and then right foot, left, and look, we have the addition one lit up sign as well. And then your fourth step, and then in you come. And we have the leather and the white stitching there. Nicely done, and the leather covered steering wheel. It's almost like a car, that steering wheel, look at it. And, and the mirror cam feature as well. So if you'll notice up above the mirror, we do have, it's like a chrome cap on the mirror cam. So I'm just gonna turn on the ignition just to show you the display. So I just press that once without pressing the brake pedal, otherwise it'll start up. Now we do have this 12 inch screen here. Now it's a, a 10 inch standard, but on the edition one, it comes with a 12 inch screen. So uh, you can get a 12 inch screen on a standard Actros if you want, but um, on the Actros as standard, you have this screen and a 10 inch screen. But this one, as I said, is 12 inch. But I just want to show you some of the interior lighting because this is just, uh, you won't believe what it's capable of doing here. So let me just put on interior lighting here. And you see all these little slider functions here, look. If I start sliding them, look, it's showing you on the screen what's lighting up, look. So uh, I really like that. And I'll also show you the ambient lighting. So you see, we have the blue lights there. And if I press this switch here, watch this, watch. We have the ambient lighting. <laughs> it's like this pink, and then we can change the color. So, oh yeah, there we go, look. You can change it to red, and back to purple and white and we can have it like an orange uh so yeah that's pretty cool isn't it and blue but uh i kind of like that it's uh unique to the edition one but the lighting is very good in it anyway you can really get plenty of light and let me just get up these colors here and just show you exactly all the ambient lighting look down on the side wall up on top and on the ceiling as well but uh yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? And we also have the premium mattress as well on the edition one. Now we do have this carbon effect all around the dashboard. Uh, that is unique to the edition one, as is the Nappa leather all around this finish here. That's all Nappa leather. And on the door as well, uh, that's pretty much as you would see on a normal Actros, the door. But uh, we do have, if I bend down here, we have this section here all around the base of the seat on the edition one and we also have a badge over there that says one of 400 so it would be nice if they were individually numbered but i'm afraid that's the way they have badged them we also have the uh carbon fiber look there inserted into the dashboard but that's just a quick look around the inside of the edition one uh, but this display is just fantastic well uh, let me just switch it on Again, there we should. Yes, you see this display. Look, um, you can also have the rev counter on the right hand side and the speedo on the left here on a different display if you wish. But uh, that's just the way this one is configured at the moment. And if you change drivers, it will remember your settings from your driver's card. So if one driver hops in and starts fiddling with all the screen here and all your settings, when you stick in your driver's card, it'll go back to your preset settings. So I think that that is really good, isn't it? So uh, let's just hop out. Uh, I just want to show you the Actros beside it, but uh, yeah, I like that lit up sign as well. That looks nice. Let's just have another step back from it here and give you another look at the exterior. So yeah, it's going to be Im immediately noticeable on the road with those four spotlights at the top visor. But have a look beside it there. We have this 1997 Actros, but uh, this has 428 horsepower from 1997. Um, if I just open it up and give you a quick look, uh, some of you would like to have a look onto the interior of this. So it's very well looked after from Mercedes here in the UK. They've done an awful lot of work uh, getting this fully restored. So yeah, 22 years of age. <laughs> and we have the Mercedes uh, Intelligent Gearbox, 16 speed. But uh, just giving you a reminder here of uh, how it used to be. How time has moved on from the new Actros 5 to this model from 1997. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool to see it. 
done up there. And this used to be a demonstrator tractor unit from Mercedes in the UK. Yeah, and then we have the 2553 there uh, with the old conventional mirrors, of course. But yeah, I just thought I'd give you a quick look around of what's in here inside in the building and the new edition one. But yeah, I'm trying to get my whole head around the no mirrors anymore. Yeah, I quite like it. It's very easy to get your head around it and uh, you get used to it very quick. Now, one small issue I would have with it is that the screen image itself, it would be nicer if it was a bit sharper. But as Jamie explained to me that this is designed for robustness. So it has to operate in extreme temperatures, hot, cold and everything in between. So that's the way it's designed to be as robust as possible. But um, who knows, maybe in the future, the screen images themselves might get a bit sharper. That's the only issue I'd have with it. Other than that, I like it a lot. So uh, I'm just gonna turn it off because um, Jamie is after giving me some <laughs> very strange news that uh, I let Jamie explain to you himself. Jamie, tell them the news. You're not gonna believe this, guys. So on the off-road course that we had, a little bit of a challenge set up for you. We yeah. started off with 100 points. You were the person who lost the least amount of points, which makes you the winner of today's off-road challenge. So I won the off-road challenge. And what other... So uh, what way does it work for the total? That means that you are one of the lead drivers, so we will send you a prize that you'll be able to take home with you, as well as your lovely selfie that we got you <laughs> of you behind the wheel of the Arox. So, yeah, I didn't do too bad in the end, guys. I think everyone else just did worse. <laughs> oh, don't say that! But, <laughs> but Jamie, look, I just decided to uh, park beside the uh, Dominic Newbies 1622 there from 1976. So it's like night and day between the two trucks, look. Uh, how time has moved on, the Actros is just packed with technology now. But Dominic Newby has 250 miles to drive home now, and he's there. <laughs> so Dominic, thanks for bringing it. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I've got another truck video to show you all next weekend, so do join me then. And make sure you're subscribed and click the notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. That's a wrap from Mercedes here in Wentworth Park in the UK, guys. Thanks a million for watching. Chat to you next weekend. Cheers! Yeah, so I'm 86 points now. So you start off with 100 and you lose points as you go. <laughs> I don't know what way the rest of the day is going to go. Paul's in the passenger seat, he's taking notes. He's going to be uh, criticizing me, probably. <laughs> <laughs>